Hello guys, I recently received this email. I've helped the person, but also I thought it would be a good idea for a YouTube video, a quick one. So imagine you have this array of timestamps of hour, minute, second, and you need to calculate the sum of that array and then return it in the same format. So I've prepared a demo project and I will show you two ways. First, kind of old school dump PHP way and a bit more elegant way with carbon. So this is my demo project with the invocable method in the controller. And this is the array and this is the expected result. And this is, I called it dumb PHP way. This is how I coded in like 90s, or in fact it was 2000s probably. I started coding in 2000s, not 90s. I'm not that old. Anyway, so the initial value of sum of seconds and then we do for each then we explode with php function those with separator and then we make a sum of seconds times 60 minutes and times 60 60 hours and then we calculate separately hours minutes and seconds and also use a function php function called strpad to add missing zeros on the left side and the result of that in the browser, we see this. As a proof that it's not a hard-coded number, we can change some variables. So for example, in the array, let's add 20 more seconds here and we refresh and we have 0407, including the leading zero here. So this is a correct function. Let's change it back, but it's not too elegant. Do you agree? Of course, it could be optimized in itself, probably shortened to like five lines of code instead of 10, probably this one could be optimized, but this is more readable to me. So I calculate the seconds, then subtract the second and the leftover is in minutes. So it's almost kind of step-by-step -step instruction for calculator. And in Laravel, there's a more elegant way. Or in fact, it's not even Laravel. It's carbon class, which is automatically included inside of Laravel. But specifically, we will use carbon interval class. So in here, we're not working with times specifically, we're working with time intervals. So what if we create an empty interval, carbon interval at the very beginning, and then we do for each and add this duration to that interval. So we're working with carbon object all the time, adding the duration. And then at the end of it, we have carbon interval object with the sum of those values. And then we can format it to the output however we want. So this is the result in a more elegant fashion. And I'm even shooting that part of the video the next day, so that's why the jumper is different. It happens to me that I get distracted and shoot even short videos in batches and in parts. So this is the result of how we can use carbon interval to do the same thing more elegantly. Let's take a look what's happening here. So we're creating carbon interval object with zero seconds, basically empty interval. And then we do the same for each, but just adding the item from the format into carbon interval, adding more and more interval to the original interval here. And then the final result can be formatted however we want. So this is exactly the potential parameter, possible parameter of date interval. You can see that in my PHP storm. So these parameters actually are not from carbon. They are from date interval PHP class, which is extended by carbon. And in the documentation, you can find all other possible format options. The only thing to know is that you do need to have percentage sign before any of those operators. So now if we refresh our homepage, this is the result. Nothing really changed, 347. And if we change the parameter to 46, it still works calculating the minutes and seconds. Important thing here with carbon interval, and I've made this mistake myself while trying to build this logic. This is important, cascade. If we don't do that, what happens? We save and refresh, and the result will be 367 seconds. So it wouldn't divide overlap of second into a minute. The actual object, by the way, let's dump it, dump interval. The object looks like this. So the object interval is actually four minutes and seven seconds. But inside of that, it has properties for year, month, day, and all the others, and seconds are not overlapping. So to avoid that, you need to cascade every time you want to transform into minutes and seconds and others. And then if we refresh, now we have four and seven here, and the actual final result is accurate. So this is, as I said, a more elegant way to do the calculation of timestamps. Maybe you want to suggest something even more elegant. Shoot in the comments below and let's discuss your ideas.
And if you want more tips like this one, subscribe to the channel because in 2023, there's a lot of new stuff coming. Hit the bell button to be notified about them and see you guys in other videos.